Perfect. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here with us. We're excited to be able to offer Montessori 101 Part 2, uh, Language and Literacy. Uh, I'm Betsy Romero, for those that don't know me. Um, and I'm happy to be here with you all in the space. Um, and today, our pr amazing presenters, our primary teachers, Ms. Halley, Ms. Juwan, and Ms. Carlina, will be uh, sharing their expertise with us. Um, so take it away. Ms. Carly, you can start um, sharing your screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, right now it's um, not in present mode, but we can okay. see this. And now it, it's loading. Okay, there we go, it works. Thanks, Tony. Sorry. <laughs> that is okay. Okay, um, hi everybody. Um, I'm Hallie Gertner and I am one of the primary guides at East End. Um, and I'm gonna get us started here tonight. Um, this adorable photo. I just have to say this uh, when we were looking at all this, Carlina asked if this was a stock photo or a staged event. And in fact, this is a real thing that happened in a real classroom. So um, just wonderful children. Um, Carly, can you go to the next slide? So welcome everybody. Um, as Betsy said, tonight we're going to be talking about the language area of the primary classroom. Um, and I'm sure everyone here can think of many reasons why language is important and why we would focus on it at school. It's something that's taught, you know, in all classrooms and all schools at all levels. Um, however, in Montessori, when we approach language, we're looking at much more than having an impressive vocabulary and becoming a proficient reader and writer. Um, the use of language is one of our most defining characteristics as humans, and it is so much more than a tool or a skill. Language is connection. It's how we connect with each other. It's how we express ourselves. It's self-expression, and it's how we reveal ourselves to the world, and we're really focusing on that in Montessori. Um, in primary, we're offering children the keys to language so that children can absorb and build their own abilities. Um, the language area is divided into three parts, spoken language, written language, and reading. Um, and tonight we'll give you a brief overview of each area. Um, and then we're also going to show you some videos of some real live language lessons with your children um, and share about how you can support your child's language development at home. Um, feel free to ask questions in the chat as we go and we'll also have a chance to answer any questions at the end as well. Um, and. I think Carlina is going to take it away with talking about spoken language first. Yes, I am Carlina. I work at Lee Montessori Brookland in the Barnensus environment. And yes, we're starting with spoken language because that's what comes first. You can't read, you can't write if you do not first either hear it or speak it yourself. So um, I have a list of things that we are constantly doing in the Montessori environment, things that you might not think are lessons, but we do them um, consciously and intentionally so that they convey some later knowledge or like Hallie was saying, provide the beginning, the foundation, the keys to later learning. Um, we know that children love stories, poems, rhymes and jingles, songs, um, some drama, uh, books of course remember to mute check that mute button for yourself um, we have a game called the question game which is kind of just like it sounds someone will tell me something like i saw a horse and i'll just ask a lot of questions what color was it where were you <laughs> was it eating what was it doing <laughs> did you get to do anything with it did you get to brush it you know and then at the end I sum it all up and say, oh, you saw a brown horse at the farm and you got to brush its tail. Oh, oh cool. Um, same kind of thing with conversations. When we have a conversation where both modeling as well as 
encouraging the practice of children having conversations, which I encourage you to think about how you're interacting with your children. Are you having conversations or are you just telling them what to do? Brush your teeth, go to bed, get your book, all that. And then sharing objects in the classroom. Um, this is kind of like show and tell, if you might be familiar with that. And again, we ask lots of questions. We allow other children to ask questions. This might be in a small group from me, and then eventually a child might bring in something to share. Um, and these, we usually try to avoid um, like toys, um, unless it's a very special toy from a special person that we can get into. Um, and more so we look at, you know, oh, we found this beehive or bird's nest or um, something from nature is really good. Um, and then grace and courtesy. Um, I'm hoping that you've heard of grace and courtesy by now, um, but that's a big way we teach language in the environment, more so how to interact with one another. We teach social language. Um, one of my grace and courtesy lessons is um, it's called ask before touching. So you have to say, can I have a hug? And you have to wait for their answer. And if it's no, you can't hug them. <laughs> That's a big one always, but particularly now. We can go to the next slide. Um, another part of spoken language is vocabulary. Um, so they first learn, learn vocabulary from us, from the guide. For spoken language, the biggest material is the guide, is the adult in the room, is you at home um, or whoever the child is speaking to. Um, so we like to get them talking um, and speech pathologists love Montessori rooms because it gives, they have so much opportunity for speaking, conversing, practicing, listening, all those great things. Um, and one of our biggest lessons in the spoken language area are three period lessons. We do this with everything. Um, it's called three periods because there are three periods, three sections, three steps. The first one, the adult names the object. So if I was teaching um, sandpaper letters, I would say this is s, and I would talk about s. This is p, we talk about p. And this is o, we talk about o. And then in the second period, I would say, where's s? That means I ask for the object, the child has to find it. So they're listening, they're hearing me say it over and over, and they're trying to match it to the object. Um, where's p, where's, where's o? And then in the last period, I say, what is this? And now the child has to produce the name of the object. Um, we do this with objects in the environment. Um, if they're unfamiliar, with the objects, like vases is a good one, doilies too. Another one, they don't always know what those words are. Um, sensorial materials, we do um, like thick and thin, uh, larger, smaller, the colors, the shapes, all those things, and classified cards. We would love to have the real objects in the classroom, but for those things that we can't, for example, elephants all of the fruits that ever existed. Like um, anything that you can think of, we still want the child to know what those are and have an opportunity to talk about them. So we call them classified cards. In other Montessori environments, they're called conversation cards because you can bring them out and say, oh, hey, an elephant. And the child will most likely naturally say, I've seen one of those. And you kind of get a conversation going. Um, but that can also be a way to teach vocabulary. Potentially they haven't seen an elephant and we might need to go through all of those, um, all that three period lesson to get, um, to get their vocabulary. And we can go to my video, which is a lesson on the sound game, which I did, did a few takes. There we go. Hopefully it works and we can hear it. I'm really hoping. Here we go. <laughs> We're going to play the sound game with beginning sounds. I have a plane. <coughs> plane. Yeah. There we go. Carly, you, you can't mute yourself so we can hear the video. Oh, okay. Heart. <laughs> it's Heart. 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 Heart.
That's it. That's the whole sound game. Um, I do it usually with a few children like you see here, just because it's a little more fun. I can reach a few more children. You can absolutely do it one-on-one. -on -one. You can mix it up. You can do beginning sounds, ending sounds, middle sounds, all the sounds in the word. Um, there are so many different ways to play a sound game. Um, one of the ones I mention a lot is I Spy, because it's a really good game to just whip out of nowhere if you're waiting or you're in the car. I spy something that starts with k. And then they have to guess, they have to think. And then they, oh, k, k, cup. Is it cup? And then, of course, when they have their turn, I spy something that starts with. Now they have to think of the beginning sounds. So it switches it up. And after they become masters of spoken language, or maybe while they're still working on it, they might start, um, they're going to start with written language. So I'm going to turn it over to Joanne. Thank you, Kalina. Hi, everyone. My name is Joanne Wang. I'm one of the primary guide in Brooklyn, and I work in the La Maison Des Avant community. So now I'm going to introduce a little bit about the language area. So language is one of the unique uh, I think it's one unique invention to transmit through, uh, transmit our thought through the symbols. Uh, so in our Montessori environment, we plan planning, we plan writing more than other aspects of language because it's a one way of expressing our own thoughts. So normally the writing comes before the reading. Yeah, most of us think reading goes first, but actually writing goes before reading because child before age six, they are very egocentric. They care, they care about themselves much more than others. So they want to express, express themselves. And it's also one of the human tendency to communicate and express. So writing comes first. So, and before for this, uh, before your child can actually take pick up the pencil and write the first word, we do a lot of preparation for that. So we have mental preparation and also manual preparation. So for the mental, actually we can understand it as a self-expression or the content. Just like, yeah, maybe Kali can go to next slide. So just Kalina introduced uh, we have a lot of oral language, oral language happening in the classroom. So the oral language gives kids a lot of the uh, content and also the strategy and the vocabulary and the dance of the communication. So they already they they are already to express themselves through the words. So and that is a vocabulary part. So and we give the we show the child the sound game just like Kalina did, and we give children the uh, awareness of the sound to, to let them know that each word is combined, it's uh, made up by each div individual sound. So this is to encourage ex exploration and analyze of language, and also as well as di discriminate the sound in word, and also prepare, preparing the mind to hear the sound and syllabus, syllabus like words um, in the word. For example, uh, uh, we, we just like Kalina did, we put up some object and said, I spy with my little eye, an object that starts with a sound, b, b, b. can you find it? Yeah, this is the maybe beginning sound. So we have the beginning sound, ending sound, the middle sound, and uh, each individual sound, like I spy some an object that have all the sound, k, a, p. what's that? 
So actually, when kids practice a lot of uh, the each sound, they're already ready to read the CVC word. Mm -hmm. So that is a sound game. So when kids experience uh, most of the sound game, we introduce a sandpaper ladder. Sandpaper ladder is a cut, um, is a, and in the Montessori environment, we use a move, uh, the cursive letters. So sandpaper letter gives the children the awareness of sound in the world, uh, in a word. And it's also uh, uniting the sound of a letter with a visual and muscular memory. Because when we uh, introduce a sandpaper letter, we have three period lesson. And we think, at the beginning, we think a list of the words for example, we are going to introduce the b, b, b. Then we take turns to think a list of the words that have this sound, for example, for example banana and a bug and a bus, any of them. Then we start to trace it. After we trace each letter and we say the sound. So we, we kind of combine the muscular, muscular memory to our visual memory. So, and by tracing it, kids get their hand ready to have the muscular memory, then they are ready to write. So that is uh, uh, our sent paper ladder. And uh, later is uh, when kids know actually most of the, most of the uh, letters or all of the letters, we introduce a movable alphabet. So the movable alphabet is a, uh, that uh, individual cut out letters. So movable alphabet, uh, it provides kids a way uh, to express themselves by writing them out before their hand is ready to, uh, before their hand is really ready to get the pencil and write the word. So they can express through making the, making the word using the movable alphabet. So movable alphabet will start with a single phonetic words and kids can sound them out. For example, yeah, in my classroom today, uh, a, a little girl, actually she made the story many times. She said, a cat sit on a dog and dog pat a bat. Yeah, some like this, this is the first step. The kids can sound out the words and they can make, make up. And later we introduce after kids practice and experience many uh, CVC words, which is phonetic words, uh, they can practice a phrase, for example, let's write something in the garage, then we have a bike. Yeah, what color the bike it is? Maybe red, can you write red? Yeah, next to the bike, what do you have? Yeah, you have a car. So what color is a car? Blue? So can you write blue? Just like this. So we introduce a phrase in, after they practice a phrase, then the phrase get longer and longer, then finally they can uh, practice to express, in, express themselves in a full sentence. That is about the uh, move of alphabet. And so in our Montessori environment, we use a cursive and many parents also ask about this, why we use a cursive. Okay, so uh, cursive, uh, so using the cursive, each letter, they are more distinct uh, from each other than print. So you can see like the b, p, g, yeah, they are quite distinct in cursive. And each letter or word is a, a continuous movement. When children start to write uh, the cursive letter, they know where to start where to begin and we don't pose in the middle. And there's a research say, research says uh, without the posing while read while writing, it's easier to easy, it's easier to write. And cursive, uh, we use a circular movement, and the cursive circular is easier than the circle. Uh, it's curved, right? And also uh, it's easy to tell where to start and where to end. And each word they connect each other so the the letters of a word they connect to each other so kids can kids can easier to recognize which is a word and which is a uh, to begin and where to end so that's why we use a cursive and okay Kali please move to the next slide so we talk about the mental. Now we are going to see some manual preparation. What do we prepare for, for a kids actually can pick up the pencil? So we have a lot of indirect preparation. Uh, they have a lot of 
work in practical life and sensorial that can practice them. There's, uh, for example, like the strength and pincer grip and lightness of touch form and from left to right, the sequencing. So uh, let me see this one. So let's, for example, the strength. So in the practical life, uh, kids have a lot of chance to carry a bucket of water and scrub in the table and carry the big piece of the brown stair and biggest piece of the pink tower. They have to use their arm and hand strength. So practicing uh, practical life and sensory material also can uh, 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 practice their strength. And next is a pincer grip. So we have, for example, the folding. Yeah, they use their pincer to gap the corner of the uh, cloth and fold them. And they have the pouring and the dressing frame and most of the cylinder, cylinder blocks and our uh, botany, botany uh, cabinet, a lot of them, they have to use as pincer grip. And lightness of touch. So, um, for example, uh, kids are at this age, they are in sensitive period of the sensorial. So we have the touch board, touch tablet, and geometric shapes. A lot of them can practice them uh, with the lightness of touch and also refine the senses. Okay. And next is a form. Form is we, pro we provided by using the sandpaper letters. Yeah, we talk about and left to right and most of the almost all the practical life that involves in the sequencing and logical uh, sequence we go through the left to right that is also indirect preparation so yeah so before kids really can pick up a pencil they already did a lot of preparation for the hand and we have some uh, direct preparation that is a metal insect and we have a video about that so metal Metal inside, we have many ways to do it. So ask a children to uh, write a letter or write a number repeatedly. It's actually is very, very boring. So we encourage children to write their um, in a very uh, creative way. So we encourage them to use a metal inset. Using the metal inset, they can uh, strengthen that piece of grip and practice the hand for the writing. And also it's very interesting. It's encourage them to create and design their own, uh, own figures. That is uh, about the direct preparation. And also we have a, we have the work to writing on the chalkboard. We have the line on line the chalkboard. And we also have the chalkboard on the on the wall. So you can see the kid, the in the picture, the child is tracing the sound paper letter and remember the shape of the letter. And then he can practice just writing next to the sound paper letter. So it's a writing. So maybe next slide, we can see some video about uh, metal insect. Yeah. Do you want me to play it right away? I think this is the table washing one. Oh, yes. So through the table washing, we can see the circular movement. This is an indirect preparation in our practical life area. And you can see also lots of grips, yeah, piece of grip. They are using the cylinder blocks and spooning and carrying, carrying the brown stairs. Lots of indirect preparation. And next is a metal inset. Yeah. So this video is. No. Yeah, I think. You can play this one or next one also. Yeah, this this hand movement is how we write. And this is a, a boy working with the metal insect.
This card is this this card is cool. Yes, this is a boy working with a metal inset. So just like I said, uh, it is very creative because this is the first stage. We normally just use one color, but he found it's pretty cool to have the interval, interval color. Yeah, so, and we have many stage. This is the first stage. So later we have the uh, shading and also design with many, uh, make their own design with many shapes. It's very interesting. So this is about all the written. Now I will pass to, I will pass to Holly to talk about some, to, to talk about reading. Great. Um, and actually I think here's a slide just of some examples of children's writing over, um, <laughs> some different things that uh, children have written. Actually, um, I will tell a quick funny story, which is that uh, chalkboard that says, help Isabella right now, that happened in my classroom four years ago, I think. And there was a child who really wanted my attention and I was not available and I kept telling her I'm not available. And she wrote, help Isabella right now on the chalkboard because she wanted help. And that was her way of communicating. She used language as a way to communicate with us. Um, so I just love that story. I think it's so funny. Uh, okay, Carly, we go to the next slide. Um, so I'm going to talk about reading. Um, and as you just heard from heard before, um, a child is going to be doing extensive spoken language and written and writing work before we, we begin formal reading activities. So as guides, we're looking for signs that a child is ready to begin reading, such as they're starting to sound out words around the environment, they're noticing words, um, and they're starting to read their movable alphabet work. Um, we approach writing as self-expression and communicating your thoughts to the world. And reading is the opposite. It's reading the thoughts of someone else. Um, and so you'll see this actually demonstrated in the example video um, in a few moments. Um, the reading activities that we do in primary are fun, they're engaging, and they're sensorial. We act stuff out, we get silly, we do a lot of really fun things. Um, Montessori felt strongly about children diving deeper into reading than just being able to mechanically read. And she wrote about something called total reading. Um, and she believed that children uh, should read with deep comprehension, awareness of nuances of vocabulary and awareness that, a, that there's a person behind the text. So total reading doesn't typically happen in primary, but we are working to um, develop total reading and that work continues into elementary. Um, Many of the activities you've already heard about um, help to prepare children for reading, and two of the most significant ones are the sound game and the movable alphabet. So that's stuff that children are doing to get them ready for reading. Uh, next slide, please. So our first reading materials focus on basic mechanics of reading before we get into that deep comprehension, what is the author trying to say, all that stuff, we have to learn how to read first. Um, and we start with phonetic reading. So you've probably heard of CBC words, and these are the most basic words to sound out and read. Um, in a phonetic word is a word in which each letter makes a consistent sound or the sound that we associate with the move with, or with the sandpaper letters. Um, 
So once a child is confident in reading phonetic words and phrases, um, we start introducing phonograms because English is a wacky and terrible language that doesn't follow um, rules that make any sense. So um, phonograms or digraphs are combinations of letters that make a consistent sound. So like SH says sh, EE -E says E, AR says R. Um, and actually you can see some phonogram work here. Uh, someone wrote art. I picked this picture because I thought it was very funny. <laughs> they wrote it correctly. <laughs> um, we always have fun with this. And so once a child starts learning phonograms, um, we start using them in our reading and writing. And at the same time that a child is learning phonograms, we start doing puzzle words, which is just the Montessori version of sight words. Um, similarly, once we start doing puzzle words, we're going to be using these in our reading and writing, and we're going to be starting to pay attention more in our writing to how words are spelled um, and not just sounding them out. Um, and so these early reading activities, there's a lot of different activities um, where children are practicing these skills and really focusing on um, the basic mechanics of reading. And now you'll see a video of the phonetic object game, which is the very first reading material. Okay, so when you open up another Cat. 
Bill Frog. Yeah. Now it's time to walk Frog, this cat, son, pig. No. Yeah. And now, what if we let's mix up all the labels and you can label them again? Okay. Let's put them in a pile. Mix them up. You can label them all again. I know the sound was a little bit off of what we were saying, or at least when it was coming through my computer, but hopefully you got the gist of that. And that's just a really fun first experience of reading that we do. Um, can we go to the next slide? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, so the next kind of uh, area or set of materials um, that we have in the in reading um, is called reading classification. And so these activities are meant to help a child practice their mechanical reading skills in a fun and safe way by reading familiar words and practicing like fluidly reading. We're, we're not trying to sound out quite as much. Now we're trying to you know read in our head. Um, the reading classification materials include labels for almost everything in the classroom, general objects, um, labeling the materials, labeling the sensorial materials. So we've got labels for the colors in the color box, labels for the shapes in the geometry cabinet. Um, any, everything in the classroom's got a label. Um, another one is the three-part cards, uh, which you may have heard of, um, where children are labeling pictures and checking their work with control cards. And each set of cards is a category. So we've got um, sets of musical instruments or fruits or reptiles. And generally the three-part cards are um, similar to the classified cards that you would have in your classroom that Carlina talked about earlier. So these are all things that children are familiar with and we're revisiting this vocabulary and this time we're practicing reading. Um, and then the last material in this area is definition stages where children are reading a short book and then practice mixing up the words to recreate what they read. Can we go to the next one? Um, the next area is called function of word. And this is my personal favorite um, reading activity, my personal favorite reading activities. Uh, function of word is Montessori's version of grammar or parts of speech. So uh, we have a series of activities where children ex sensorially explore what different parts of speech mean. For example, when we're learning about verbs and adverbs, we are acting them out. Uh, we're acting out what we read. And when we're learning about conjunctions, we're tying objects together with a ribbon to demonstrate what the word and means. Um, and a lot of these activities use the, the famous Montessori farm. Um, we're playing with language and we're looking at types of word words and how they function in a phrase. So you'll see there is a list um, on this slide of the different types of parts of speech that we explore. Um, and each type of word has a symbol. And this work with these grammar symbols and looking at um, parts of speech continues into elementary. Next one. And so the last two areas um, uh, of reading activities help are really helping children to develop that total reading. And this kind of work really continues into elementary as well. Um, and so not all children in primary may get to this work while they're in primary, they might get into it in lower elementary. Um, it just kind of depends where children, you know, where children get to. Um, so we've got reading analysis and reading analysis and word study. So in reading analysis, children are taking sentences, they're acting them out, and then they're cutting them up and looking at the relationship between different parts. So they're looking at the predicate and the direct and indirect objects, attributes, things like that. Um, and then with word study, uh, we do this at the same time as reading analysis, children are exploring categories of words. So they're exploring contractions or antonyms, compound words, homonyms, et cetera. And the possibilities are endless for the types of words that you could explore. So that's all for um, the reading, all the reading materials. And now Carlina is gonna talk a little bit about what you can, how you can support your child's language development at home. Here's our big slide of words, but hopefully you've picked up some of your own ideas throughout our presentation. Um, one of the things I would encourage the most is um, talking with your children and not 
at them. Of course, you need to talk at them sometimes when it's time for bed, when it's time to go. But more often than that, just take stock of how often you're saying something that you expect a long response to more than one word, more than yes, no. And how often you're expecting them to just walk away after you talk. <laughs> um, uh, additionally, you can create an environment um, that encourages learning, um, loving, our, the, loving school, loving the school environment, encouraging independence and self-expression. Um, they're not going to know what to write if they don't know what to say, if that makes sense. First, you have to figure out what you're going to say before you can put it on a paper. So you have to help them figure out what to say first. Um, don't use baby talk. Um, I have one child that keeps saying um, boobanas. <laughs> like, you mean bananas? Um, and it's adorable uh, when they're two. <laughs> but then they get really confused when they're trying to write, when they're trying to speak to other children and they're not being understood. Um, so try your best to encourage accurate language, but rather than correct them, say, it's not boobanas, say banana. You can say, oh, yes, we're going to have bananas. Just modeling that language over and over again. Um, play these games that we've been mentioning. Um, the sound game is the easiest one. If you want more suggestions, contact your child's guide so that you can get a sense of exactly what they do and where your child is in this progression. Because have you seen it, as you have seen tonight, it is a progression, um, it's not all at once and things build on what was previous. So if your child's working on the sound game, let's not jump into nouns just yet. <laughs> let's, let's wait on that. Um, when you're walking around, when you're in the car, when you're at the park, the grocery store, use as much language as you can. Help your child identify and classify as many things as you can. Oh yes, this is a papaya, that's a fruit. Um, and that's a really easy example. It can get more and more complicated. Um, and of course, read, read books, model that you like to read. Um, even someone sitting in the corner with their own book, an adult reading to themselves, not out loud, but just reading to themselves, that's great modeling that you enjoy reading and you want to do it for yourself, not just for the child. Most children naturally love story time and books. So let's just try to keep that going as they learn to read. Um, and I added the last one there, play the sound game. <laughs> so let us know um, if you do that. And if you have any questions, now is the time. Um, you can unmute or you can throw it into the chat box there. Um, and we will do our best to answer. If you have specific questions about your child, those are best directed to your guide um, in an email or parent square message. Um, but right now, more general questions about language in the environment or how to encourage it. Wow, we did such a good job. We explained it so thoroughly. <laughs> Everyone is crystal clear. <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. You're very welcome. All right, well, I'm gonna say that is all we have tonight. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. Again, if you have more questions, if it comes up tomorrow, feel free to email your guide. Um, they'll be happy to help you. Oh yes, and this will be this has been recorded and posted on the YouTube channel. So tell your friends <laughs> to go catch it. Um, and if you need help locating that, you can also email your guide. And have a great night. Yes, thank you.